Good day, everyone. Today, I uh, wanted to hop on and dive into the different phases of the counter movement jump. The counter movement jump is a test we frequently use on the force plates. Um, this test gives us a bit more than just jump height. I know most people talk about that a lot, but it gives us a bit more than that. It provides a full breakdown of the athlete's movement patterns from how they lower, this, how they lower themselves, how they land. Um, and by understanding the different phases of the counter kind of movement jump, we can identify key strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities to make the athletes overall better, right? So the goal of the presentation is to explain what happens during each phase and how the athletes themselves are interacting with the force plate. So interacting with the ground, right? And because the force plate takes ground reaction forces. So while doing that and giving brief descriptions of each phase, I'll try to highlight some metrics that you will see associated with the different phases of the kind of movement jump, because we obviously use the force plates to monitor athletes, create performance baselines, test them, all these different things. So by understanding the phases, it will allow us to understand which metrics to look for going forward, right? So jumping into it, the first phase is the weighing phase. So the weighing phase is when the athlete stands still on the force plate to establish their body weight. Now, different people call it different things. We have the weighing phase, the still phase, the static phase, all necessarily the same thing, right? So, but the importance of this phase is that body weight that's set when during this weighing phase, right? It creates their baseline for everything that's about to happen down the line, right? On the force time curve itself, the body weight will show up in newtons, right? So if you zero out the plates correctly and everything, the threshold is set, newtons will be the athlete's body weight, right? Because the, Newton, the Newtonian laws of physics basically govern how force plates works and different things like that, right? So keep that in mind going forward. So the force recorded here reflects that the athlete's body mass under normal gravitational conditions, any changes in force afterwards are measured relative to the baseline, right? So also if this phase, if there's any problems with this phase, for example, like an athlete got on the plates too quickly, sometimes depending on the software you have, you will notice something off of their weight, but also you have to reset it from there because if you don't, everything down the line will be just wrong, right? It won't be correct. So moving on from the weighing phase, that's when we have the unweighting phase. So in this phase, this is when an athlete basically starts to free fall. They start to lower themselves so they can actually turn it around into a jump. So the unweighing phase begins when an athlete starts lowering themselves into a jump, force drops below body weight as the athlete accelerates downward. So what that looks like, the force dropping below body weight, like we spoke about before, during the weighing phase, they create their baseline and it will be shown in newtons on a force time curve so if you think about it if you follow the cursor let's say right to the left of where this is showing right here would be the weighing phase right so 600 800 newtons this means this athlete is around let's say 640 to 660. um so they will be right here as soon as they dip under this baseline this this black um dash line would be considered their baseline for this example obviously I also got these different photos and everything from a McManon paper. McMahon, I might've been saying the name wrong. I'll, I'll put that in the link to the description if you want to read it, really good paper. But um, as the athlete drops below body weight, that's what it looks like right here. So they're actually basically applying less force into the ground to help lower themselves and accelerate downwards, right? So another thing to point out on the force time curve, this thick black line right here that we're following is what's considered their net force. So um, this is their left and right together. But we use vol force decks. I know Hawkins Dynamics has, I think it in like yellow and or no purple and orange when it comes to left and right. So you'll see left and right on your force time curve when you start looking at the different um, force time curves of your athletes. But for this paper and this example, they're using just the one so you can follow along and understand the different phases. So this right here will be net force, so left and right together. And this gray dash line will be velocity. So keep that in mind also, because that points out some different things also. Right, so in weighing phases, when athlete starts lowering themselves into jump and that force is dropping below baseline. Next thing is the breaking phase. 
So the breaking phase actually starts at two, not at two points, but two points show the, the start of the breaking phase. When that force starts to get back past baseline, so as you can see right here, obviously like we talked about before, the black dashed line is baseline, and right here when it gets above baseline, that's when the breaking phase starts. So now the athlete is producing more force to try to stop themselves from going down, right? So on the force time curve, I know when I first started with um, the force space, it was a bit confusing to see it going up and that's not the athlete actually jumping. But so I know if people just make it, just, just maybe get into it, everything wouldn't make that clear. Even though the athlete's moving down with the force curve rises because they're applying more force into the ground to stop themselves going down. So as we can see, breaking phase coincides with force becoming positive again. And also with this right here, with velocity reaching the bottom. So a metric you may see is peak negative velocity. So peak negative velocity coincides with the start of the breaking phase. So I just wanted to point that out as we continue to go through this, right? So moving on to the breaking phase, now we have the propulsion phase. So the propulsion phase begins when the athlete starts moving upward. Not that the force moves up, but the athlete himself is starting to move upward, right? They start to extend, right? So the goal here is to apply as much force as possible into the ground, right? To get up off the ground. So this way you see max power output. That's why we key metric there, your peak power. That one's for body mass. When you see watts divided by kg, that's relative to their body weight, um, the athlete. Maximum power output relative to body weight, the concentric rate of force development, how quickly the athlete ramped up that force will push off, right? So this phase shows how an athlete turns stored energy into upward motion. So if the peak power is low, we know we have to work on, right? So it may indicate that the power, that athlete needs to improve their low body strength, their speed, and their power, right? Also, still looking at the graph, propulsion starts when velocity hits zero. Well, not necessarily when it hits, it starts right after velocity hits zero because once this, when this, once this velocity hits zero, that's the amortization phase. So basically your isometric transition phase, you call it the sticking point, right? So right here where it hits zero, this line right here is the bottom of the counter movement jump. So this is the bottom of the jump. That's where it hits zero. That's the amortization phase, a bit of the sticking point, what we call it isometric. And then when this velocity turns positive, that's when propulsion starts, right? So you just wanna like make that sort of clear because obviously these things are pretty tight right on this line, but like, just so you understand, that's the isometric phase. That's the amortization phase right there, right? When that force hits zero. Now, so moving on from there, and obviously the propulsion phase, before I move on actually, the propulsion, the propulsion phase carries on until the athlete leaves the plates. So right when the athlete leaves the plates, then we get into flight phase, right? So this is the end of propulsion right here if you follow the cursor. End of propulsion, athlete is off the plates and this is considered the flight phase, so flight time. So flight phase starts when athlete's feet leaves the ground and ends upon landing. And at the peak of the jump, velocity briefly reaches zero. Right, so that'll be this point right here, as you can see. So that's velocity going up, athlete leaves the plate, velocity is obviously coming on the way down because how gravity works on the body. This point right here will be the peak of the jump, right? So that's where you get your flight time from, your jump height, different things like that. So for example, that's like, if you take a ball and throw it up as high as you can, it's gonna to continue to rise until it's a point that it just can't anymore than it has a brief, Start point that obviously won't be able to see the naked eye, but as a brief start point, then it starts to decelerate down quickly, right? So that's the flight phase at the peak of the jump. The athlete isn't moving up or down. Gravity is stopped. They're upward motion for an instant before pulling them back down, right? So now gravity is working against the body. And that's why I spoke about earlier, like a lot of the kind of movement jump is suffered force plates. Um, the Newtonian physics like govern them, like the laws govern it, right? And then from there, as the athlete hits the plates again, this now turns into the landing phase, right? So the landing phase begins when an athlete contacts the ground again. This phase measures how well the athlete absorbs and distributes landing forces. 
right? You also can see a bit of time it takes to stabilize. That's this part over here. But I would say if you really want to understand how an athlete lands, there's a lot of different tests you can do in the kind of moment jump. I would say different depth drops on it, drop jumps and things like that. Like do things that focus on the landing instead of just looking at it from a kind of moment jump standpoint, even though you could get a few metrics from it, like as you can see, peak landing force, landing symmetry and stuff like that. Um, always keep an eye out for different landing asymmetries and stuff like that, even concentric asymmetries, honestly, um, because they can obviously show some imbalances and people would say obviously they lead to injury, but sport is sort of a crazy thing. So a lot of things can lead to injury, but from a programming standpoint, you don't want some insane asymmetry. So obviously look out for that as you look through the athlete's metrics. You'll be able to see that on their force time curve when you when it's not just net force, but when it's net force and then left and right force together. So keep your eyes out for those things. But those are the six phases of the kind of movement jump. So just a quick summary again to end it all. As you can see, this is what it looks like from someone actually doing it. So let's go over it again. We have the weighing phase right here, which establishes the body's the, the athlete's body weight. On weighing phase is when they start to basically free fall, like get they preparing themselves to jump, right? So they're lessening the force on the plates, getting ready to turn all that stored energy into propulsion, right? So from here, now in this picture, just so you guys have a good idea, the blue line is the vertical force, so that's their net force, and the orange line is velocity. So if you're trying to make sure you follow that part, so blue line right here, as we can see right here, breaking phase is starting right with peak negative velocity again. Athletes breaking, they're above their baseline. Propulsion phase starts right when this velocity turns positive again. Right, so when this starts, we have a propulsion phase, propulsion phase ends, turns into flight phase. This is the point right here when athletes at their highest and then bang back to landing phase, right? So just to read all of them again for the key takeaways, we have established baseline body weight is the weighing phase. On weighting phase is minimum force indicates how much athlete unloads before breaking, right? The breaking phase is the eccentric rate of force development shows how quickly the athlete can decelerate. Propulsion phase is correlated with peak power indicates explosive strength. Flight phase is the flight time and jump height indicate basically overall performance. And then the landing phase has to do with like landing forces, the symmetry highlighted highlighted on the impact of absorption and balance. So obviously just wanted to hop on here and give this quick video out so people trying to understand the different phases of force plates. Um, if you can, let me know what else you guys want me to tap into. Happy to be on this journey to get started, but thanks you. Thank you for watching that.